Or good morning. Evening. I felt like evening. I, I can say that there is some improvement in transportation. It only took 20 minutes to get through the tunnel uh, after wreck, as opposed to the two and a half hours we've had in the past. Um, okay, I'm going to call. Do we have an agenda? We have a community agenda. We do have an agenda. We have a quorum. So executive Okay, we do have that. Okay, very good. All right, I'll call the meeting to uh, order. Uh, everybody should have seen the uh, review the agenda. Are there any approvals, modifications to the agenda? Seeing none. Okay, we are now going into closed session. The uh, that means that the only people that will be allowed in this room are commissioners. Okay, and I'm going to do that. Hang on, you don't need to run rush out. I've got to read a whole bunch of stuff here to make sure we're all legal. All right. And I'm supposed to say this, the next item of business before the HRPDC is to advise all members of the commission present that it is my judge, that in my judgment appropriate to enter into a closed meeting as authorized by the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. This closed meeting will be restricted to only those matters specifically exempted from disclosure pursuant to uh, paragraph 2-2-3711A. The closed meeting is to be held for the purpose of personnel matter under section 2.2-3711A1 to discuss the executive director's performance and salary. Uh, commission is uh, deemed it necessary as specified by the Virginia Freedom of Information Act that the following non-members be present during closed meeting. Uh, Mayor Molly Ward, chairman of the HRTPO. And is Molly here? Nope. There she oh, is. hi Molly. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, do I have a motion that the commission now enter into a closed meeting to discuss matters relating to personnel? So moved. Second. Okay, Second. wait a minute, hang on. We've got to get the names down here to be legal. All right, so who made the motion? I assume we made the motion. Okay. Barry. Barry. Out of Franklin. Okay, and, uh, and who seconded it? Seconded. Okay, Ms. Ward. All right, thank you. All right, so you copy that. All right. Uh, so we've got that. It should be noted uh, for the record uh, that a motion to enter into the closed meeting for the uh, aforementioned purpose has been made, and we've identified and seconded as identified, and unanimously approved uh, by an affirmation vote by all members present. So all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, good. We're now moving in closed session. So everyone that's not a commissioner, a session here with, i got got some more legal process i got to go through. Uh, chairman, let's see, uh, I do, do I have a motion indicating that the members of the commission certify to the best of uh, their knowledge, one, basically, only public uh, business matters lawfully exempted uh, from open meeting requirements under this chapter, and only such uh, public business matters as were proposed under the motion under which the closed meeting was convened, were heard, discussed, or considered on the topic of personnel matters. Okay. Do I have to have a roll call? Yes. Or do we have a motion? So moved. Okay. Got a motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Who was the motion? Right. Aye. Aye. Roll call. Aye. For the, for the last, for the, for the pay rate? No. no. Roll call. Closed session. Okay. Just hang on here. Oh, for the certification. We're going to do a roll call. Okay, Kelly, please do a roll call. Uh, Mr. Shepard? Yes. Mr. Spiegel? Aye. Mr. Score? Aye. Mr. Jones? Hey, Louie. Aye. Mr. Chandler? Yes. Mr. Cuffington? Aye. Uh, Mr. Pisco? Aye. Ms. Bunting? Aye. Mr. Wheeler? Aye. Mr. Chia? Aye. Mr. Uh, Martin? Aye. Mr. Stewart? Aye. Mr. Franklin? Aye. Uh, Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Dorfman? Aye. Mr. Ward? Aye. Dr. Price? Yeah, aye. Ms. Jones? Aye. Ms. Jones? Aye. Mr. Tuttle? Aye. Um, Mayor Wright? Aye. Okay, so we've certified that we didn't say bad things. Okay. <laughs> now, the second came from the second. The second came from You got it? Okay, now, we need a, a motion uh, uh, from the commission to... Um, uh, I would guess award the 1.5% uh, merit increase to the executive director. And uh, once the motion is made, I'm going to call Molly to make a statement uh, as a TPO rep. So do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Chris Crisco. Second was? 
Dr. Ward, and Mayor Hampton, Molly Ward. Um, as chair of the HRTPO, I just wanted to remind everyone that um, Mr. Farmer wears two hats as executive director, and as the executive director, he manages two very complicated organizations, and I think he does it with tremendous skill and a, and a um, vital work ethic, and he serves our community beautifully, and as chair of the HRTPO, I wanted to endorse his um, performance bonus. Raise. Thank you very much. Any other discussion at this point on the motion? Okay, we do not need a roll call vote for this. Okay. Um, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, noted. Therefore, the motion passes. Okay, now we get back to normal business. But we do have to approve officially the Okay, uh, everybody has the agenda. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Um, got that. And second was from uh, John Stewart, right? I find it. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the agenda, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, good. Anybody opposed? All right, we've done that. All right. Um, now, we, the first one will be John Carl. I talk about the legislative agenda. John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, members of the Commission. Uh, the draft legislative package is in your uh, agenda as item number uh, four. Uh, this was developed by the staff. Uh, we worked very closely with the advisory committees. Uh, we got some input from a number of uh, other local government staffs. Uh, today, what I want to do is review kind of the highlights of that uh, and uh, hopefully get some input from uh, commissioners on either additional items or uh, items that we ought to forego. Uh, in the past, uh, we have, uh, the Commission has taken a number of case-specific actions and communicated those to the General Assembly, and that has been our, our legislative approach. Uh, about a year ago, uh, we proceeded with development of a legislative agenda for the current year. Um, that was the first time uh, in in recent memory that the Commission has actually put one together, so this is round two. Uh, there are a number of items that are in the uh, draft legislative package that are carryovers from last year, continuing concerns and things that uh, uh, we need to continue paying attention to as a region. And then we, uh, the last part of this was to review uh, legislative agendas that were put together by the localities and the various state associations like VML, VACO, uh, planning, uh, stormwater, and emergency management. The first couple of slides, or next couple of slides, deal with funding items. Uh, a couple of these are continuing items from last year. Uh, water quality funding to support uh, full funding for the Water Quality Improvement Fund and to in include consideration in that the costs of uh, implementing the TMDL. Uh, in, in Hampton Roads, uh, implementing MS4 permits and uh, the sanitary sewer overflow consent order. Uh, related to uh, base closure and land acquisition associated with that, uh, land acquisition to continue protection of uh, NAS Oceana and Joint Base Langley, Fort Eustis. Uh, those reflect uh, the legislative packages of uh, the City of Virginia Beach and the City of Hampton. And then the last item on um, this section of the funding items is to uh, restore funding to the PDC uh, to the level that it was uh, 11 years ago at 24 cents per capita. The current rate is only 9 cents per capita from the state. Uh, last year, uh, the commission endorsed uh, the establishment of a housing trust fund. That was done last year. There was a one-time appropriation, and the recommendation is that uh, we support continued funding uh, in order to sustain that fund going forward to uh, assist with the provision of affordable housing and, and address uh, homeless issues. Under emergency management, these are new items uh, to establish a dedicated statewide fund to uh, provide adequate funding for local and regional emergency management work uh, to support use of state resources. Uh, to uh, sustain and, and replace those readily deployable regional uh, assets uh, without having to activate the uh, state mutual aid agreement and or uh, get a federal emergency declaration. Next item is uh, 
relates to emergency planning, uh, and that's to support legislation that would require uh, nursing homes, assisted living facilities, daycare centers, both adult and child, uh, to develop uh, emergency plans and to have some sort of a review process that makes sure that they are, are meeting some minimum standard. Uh, as a region, uh, the HOPE seminars that the emergency management folks put on every May is a way to try and educate the uh, people in these communities as well as the hospitals on, on what is necessary and how to put a, an emergency management uh, plan together. Uh, sea level rise and coastal flooding in, in the current uh, year, uh, General Assembly authorized a study by the Virginia Institute of Marine Science uh, to look at recurrent flooding in eastern Virginia from Hampton Roads to, uh, to northern Virginia and the Potomac, including the eastern shore. Uh, we expect that that report, which is due in November, uh, will make some recommendations. Among, among others, we'll uh, recommend a continued study by uh, VIMS and others to uh, continue addressing the issue. What we're suggesting is that uh, new legislation would require the state natural resource and emergency management agencies to work through the coastal PDCs, the eight of us uh, who are involved in, in the sea level issue, uh, to make sure that we can look at a long-term funding source to uh, assist localities in addressing the issue and develop appropriate enabling authority for localities so that you can in fact address the issue. Environmental initiatives, the next, <clears throat> excuse me, three slides uh, deal with that. Uh, most of these are in some fashion carryover from the current year uh, dealing with stormwater management to make sure that state legislation in fact clarifies and improves consistency among the state stormwater management programs and uh, a quick count this morning, uh, there are seven or eight programs. They all have somewhat disparate uh, requirements and localities and the private sector have to deal with those. So anything to try and continue to bring those together uh, seemed important. Uh, authority for localities to require when a developer applies for his uh, uh, stormwater permit, uh, the localities can require him to provide his pollution prevention plan at that time as part of the uh, permit application. Presently, that is required at the state level, uh, but it's not clear in the legislation or the regulations that uh, localities have that authority. <coughs> Similarly, uh, uh, under the new stormwater regulations, uh, localities have some responsibility for BMPs, obviously within the permitted area. This applies primarily in the phase two in the county areas. Uh, much of the county is outside of the, the MS4 boundary, and what this would do is give uh, localities the authority to uh, inspect those uh, BMPs outside of the permit area and so that you can make sure that uh, countywide or citywide that uh, the requirements are being met. The Nutrient Credit Exchange Program, we were successful in the, in the 2011 session with getting a program established. Uh, we know that there is are some rumblings out there to, uh, to change how that program is structured, and this would suggest continuing to support the trading programs to make sure that, in fact, localities uh, realize the gains that we think we made this year, uh, both through the legislation and the regulations. Uh, next item uh, is there is still some confusion, but right now it, uh, the suggestion is that uh, we support legislation that would require VDOT to accept maintenance responsibilities for drainage on sec state secondary roads. The secondary road acceptance standards uh, limit or eliminate uh, VDOT's responsibility for maintenance of BMPs and uh, uh, other drainage facilities that happen to fall within their right of way unless they are owned by VDOT. Uh, there's also a limitation on VDOT. Uh, uh, implementing BMPs to deal with the TMDL. The, the way those standards are written, that becomes a local responsibility, not a, a VDOT responsibility. Tree canopy requirements, this is a continuation from the past uh, legislative agenda. Uh, it's provide localities authority to establish requirements. Uh, it helps with water quality. It's a, a relatively low cost uh, 
way of dealing with water quality issues. It also will help us on the air quality side. Uh, this is something that Northern Virginia localities uh, already have the legislative authority to do. Uh, uranium mining uh, to support continuing maintenance of the moratorium on mining, and that's consistent with the resolution that the Commission passed last month. Uh, the recycling area, uh, the proposals deal primarily with supporting development of markets and economic development activities. Uh, on the glass item, uh, right now any glass which is recycled uh, goes to North Carolina, they process it and then bring it back to Tuano to the uh, Owens, Illinois, Owens Brockaway uh, facility uh, to make new glass. Uh, they do that because there isn't sufficient glass, there isn't sufficient market here to support the development of uh, a new industry and uh, uh, we're suggesting that these kinds of things would, uh, would help foster that economic development activity. Uh, these items deal again with the TMDL. They are carryover from the current year. Uh, the first uh, four or five are items dealing with uh, septic tanks, uh, giving additional authority to localities, establishing a cost share program, and amending the existing Chesapeake Bay Preservation Act to, to require the health department to take on the monitoring and inspection of septic tanks rather than <coughs> localities. Health department issues the permits, uh, the way that program is structured right now, localities are then responsible for, for monitoring and making sure people pump out their septic tanks. And the last item, again, is another funding-related item to uh, support the uh, agricultural programs uh, in the soil and water conservation districts and their cost share program uh, around the state. Uh, we've talked about the first item on this, uh, this list, dealing with state government administration before on the consolidation and integration of uh, stormwater programs. Uh, the Federal Action Contingency Trust Fund is one that was established uh, last year uh, to encourage business growth, encourage protection of military facilities. There is some confusion right now about the use of that, particularly in the absence of a, a new BRAC or BRAC-like kind of action. Uh, the suggestion here is to support legislation clarifying that uh, those funds can, in fact, be used uh, uh, whether there is a new BRAC or not. And then last but not least on this, in this section, uh, right now local governments are required to publish uh, notices in, in newspapers of general circulation. There are very specific times that that has to be done. Uh, the recommendation is that uh, uh, those can be supported uh, or can be posted on the website or, or other local media. These are two that I think are common to every uh, locality's uh, legislative agenda as well as VML and, and so forth. Uh, there are probably additional items that make sense from a regional standpoint. We wanted to, to hear from you. Uh, after this discussion, uh, we will revise the uh, legislative agenda. Uh, we'll bring it back for consideration at your November meeting, and then assuming favorable action, uh, that will then be forwarded to the uh, region's delegation, the General Assembly, the governor, and, and the various uh, other appropriate state associations and so forth. Thank you. Uh, we have to entertain Carl, questions or comments. Are there any questions for Ms. Carlock? I'm just um, curious about, um, I know HRPDC tries to stay away from broad <coughs> legislative items, but on the very end with the unfunded mandates, I would like to see something in here about education and the general assembly, assemblies continue to salt on public schools budgets and how that has been passed down to localities. And um, I'm curious to see if any other commissioners are interested in having a specific mention of public school and education budget. Yes, we are an unfunded mandate. It would be yeah, SOQs that's in that's this right. case. I'm trying to address your question. Um, you, you guys recall from the last meeting I suggested, or it was the last meeting or two meetings ago, I can't remember, but it was it suggested that the localities provide the staff here with their legislative package for the community so we could maybe uh, kind of gang up on them and we could carry a little more horsepower to the state. And this thing's like education, I believe that's uh, part of like your counties, that's something very similar. 
Uh, I, these these uh, legislative uh, pr uh, priorities, if you will, for the HRPDC, these are gleaned in house, uh, principally by the staff listening and you know learning and trying to follow what we want. Uh, I asked if they received any input, and they've gotten some, but not enough input from the localities. And I know you're in various stages of development. I don't think you I don't think it's necessary that you actually have to have a final approved solution for your council to, or from your board of supervisors, just to flow that information here so they can get a sense of how many communities are even interested in a subject. So I would ask the commissioners to go back, get your, you know what, I think you're already looking at them. You, you need to be looking at this stuff because it's getting ready to start here pretty soon. I know York County is uh, about the second or about the second time around, and we're ready to ship them up. I'm disappointed that York County didn't provide you those, and I've got that point to my county administrator. But along those lines, it follows that this staff can get this, get this input. Well, the city of Norfolk has already released their uh, okay. legislative priorities, and we're going to be meeting on that. And we've continued to put in our legislative package to oppose any cuts on um, education funding. So I'm pretty sure most localities have had that. I'd just like to see it specifically mentioned, maybe under the unfunded mandates part with the uh, SOQs. Let we'll, we'll me get back to work. I just want to concur with um, Smigo that we, this is something that's really uh, very key, and it gets worse each legislative session, uh, especially when it comes to SOQs, and we get fewer and fewer positions covered by the state. So um, I would I certainly concur, and we just we finished our legislative package, and if we need to get something specifically from Chesapeake, we can do that. But being an unfunded mandate, SOQs, uh, we need to put education, I agree that we need to put education in there and have the top priority from this body also to show support for the localities that are constantly being, as you said, assaulted more and more, um, you know, expenses are really handed down to the localities and the, the state is taking on less responsibility, not just for, the, um, you know, sewer and water, but also education. Has Chesapeake developed its legislative package yet for this year? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. Dan, can you bring that forward? Absolutely. Just on. I agree with the, you know, supporting the education funding, uh, but it's not a topic of, of a PDC. What we're, what we're developing is a legislative agenda about the issues that we as a PDC address, and education is not in it. It's more of a BACO, DML, other organizations. I, that's just my two cents on it. Okay. Um, not to stifle any discussion on those points, I I, I think as as, uh, as a PDC, we're we're one of the few uh, organizations where you actually come together on a broad base base of subjects. I would offer that you bring it forward, and because in November is when we will vote on our legislative package, you will be able to pull it apart or argue about those points. But at this right, I'll be honest with you, at this point. You know, I'm ready to accept anything that comes in just to get educated on how various communities feel about issues. Because I think in the end, we got to have some muscle because we're getting killed up by Northern Virginia on this on the money. Okay, um, one 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 part, John. Uh, I know your county submitted something a reference at stormwater uh, on the uh, for folks. If you haven't under, if you don't understand this one, you need to understand it because this is is an unfunded mandate. There was a VDOT requirement for locality-owned drainage easements. Okay, this is where they would not accept any more roads if, uh, the, if the community did not accept the drainage easement essentially all the way down to the water. Mm -hmm. All right, um, that's because VDOT didn't want to accept the responsibility; they didn't want to deal with the homeowner association, and therefore they pushed the money on to you. Well, I, I found I kind of got the picture on this yesterday, or yesterday, and I called the staff and I said, "What the heck's going on here?" And they talked to VDOT. VDOT council made them back off on that. Okay, so John, just let you know that's what I got on that one. Okay, so it Thank may you. not be a viable issue anymore. At least, okay. at least according, according to our director of, uh, uh, over there. Okay, any other points? Chairman, yes, I mean, yes, and I just want to say I agree with um, Mr. Seward and. I, I, notwithstanding that education and um, unfunded mandates in our, in our localities with our schools and our educational system aren't extremely important in trying to fill that gap financially, I agree. I don't think that that is necessarily some applies to this particular board. 
However, I think everyone sitting here agrees it's very, um, very important. And as far as the SOQs and uh, various other um, funding uh, reductions that our, our schools have seen, that uh, having said that, that would be that would put that on all of our radar. And therefore, when we put together our legislative agendas um, for each respective locality, we'll be doing ours in November. Um, to have that on, and I think if that is as powerful as if each um, city or county has that as part of their legislative agenda, um, and more appropriate than this body having it on our legislative agenda. So, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, um, and so we've got about 17 minutes here before we're going to end our session here. So, is there any other comments? Okay. And again, this will be back in November. Let's go ahead and move to the uh, readyhamptonroads.org briefing. And it's Natalie Easterday. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the Ready Hampton Roads project. Um, as you can see, the purpose of Ready Hampton Roads is to provide a comprehensive online tool for both citizens and emergency managers in the Hampton Roads region. It began as an Urban Area Security Initiative grant-funded project as part of the Hampton Roads Citizen Corps Council as a way to recruit volunteers for the Citizen Corps program. However, both the HRPDC and the Citizen Corps Council recognized the value of the Ready Hampton Roads logo and website. And so in March, the HRPDC officially took ownership of Ready Hampton Roads to make sure that it would grow beyond just volunteer recruitment and be sustained beyond the life of the UASI grant which, as you're all aware, the Hampton Roads region was eliminated from that funding source. So this project will be sustained. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a comprehensive program, but what really is it? It's a screenshot of our live website. It's up right now. It was officially launched in September. Um, it's got two parts. The first part is the citizen preparedness side, which includes a calendar of events. So if local emergency managers are hosting an outreach event, they can post that up there for citizens to find. It's got general preparedness information that aligns with what Ready Virginia and the National Ready Program post. It's also got locality information. Um, our goal is not to replace what local emergency managers are doing. Rather, we're trying to post the information in another area and redirect citizens to get that information. It's also got our regional um, special needs registry, uh, which had previously been separate, so we're branding everything under Ready Hampton Roads. And of course, the volunteer opportunities, which is what this program began as. The flip side of this project is it's got a secure, um, authorized only access section for emergency managers where they can get information, a uh, detailed file library including meeting minutes, after action reports, uh, training and meeting calendar. And this is actually consolidated four independent regional emergency management websites that had been operating independently into this one program. Um, so we're really moving forward and getting very excited about this. So now that we have this project, the big reason I'm here today is because FEMA, in coordination with the Rockefeller Center, recently announced the Community Resilience Innovation Challenge that will award up to $35,000 per project uh, with no match requirement and a one-year performance period. Um, all projects will be evaluated on the innovation, collaboration, sustainability, replication, and the overall benefits it provides. Now that we have Ready Hampton Roads, we feel this fits what FEMA is looking for for this grant. and so. As part of the application, um, we're looking to do a $35,000 application for a regional uh, preparedness <coughs> campaign that would take place in 2013. It would focus on the four tenets of make a plan, build a kit, stay informed, and get involved. And again, this aligns with both what uh, the National Ready Program is doing, Ready Virginia is implementing, and of course, the local <coughs> emergency managers. And everything um, will continue to be coordinated with your local emergency management offices. So as part of the grant application, two letters of reference can be included to support the project demonstrating uh, its regional impact and <coughs> benefits to the community. So today, under action item 10H, we are requesting the adoption of resolution 2012-03 uh, supporting the grant application and authorization to apply for the grant. And with that, I'll take any questions. I know I flew through it, um, but it's short and sweet. We're excited about the program. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, thank you. We'll then move on to, uh, let's see, Nancy Collins, and we'll give the 2012 audit report. Collins. Good morning. 
Our audit firm is Dixon Goodman Hughes, LLP, and they have completed its audit for the 2012 financial activity for Hampton Roads Planning District Commission. These statements were labeled as Enclosure 6 in your agenda packet. Pending board action, they will be available on the administration section of our website after this meeting. I am here this morning to highlight some of the areas that may be of interest to you in your oversight capacity for the PDC. Ms. Leslie Roberts, a partner with Dixon Hughes Goodman, is here to answer any questions you may have regarding the statements. <coughs> First of all, I would like to point out that the HRPDC was given an unqualified opinion again this year. There were no material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, material noncompliance, no material findings, questionable costs, or deficiencies in internal controls. The statements were free of any material misstatements and complied in all material respects with the three federal standards that pertain to our type of organization. The HRPDC continues to fund its board approved reserves. You may remember that last year we had a line item for telephone system replacement reserve. Due to research by our IT manager, this line item is no longer necessary as he discovered a lease arrangement with a new company that actually reduced our monthly expense for telephone. As a result, this reserve was rolled in with communication devices and is now labeled equipment reserve. We anticipate using this reserve to replace outdated equipment throughout the building as necessary. The capital building replacement reserve will be used in the current fiscal year to fund the replacement of a roof over the entire building. This work will begin shortly and should be completed before the end of the calendar year. The HRPDC is authorized by its cognizant agency, VDOT, to use an actual indirect cost rate calculation to charge federal and state contracts and awards for its overhead expenditures. This rate is calculated and charged to the elements monthly on a cumulative year-to-date average basis. At the end of fiscal year 12, this rate was calculated to be 21.17%. This is the lowest indirect cost rate the PDC has ever charged. The amount on this slide is somewhat misleading. Yes, it is found on page 6 of the financial statements under net assets unrestricted. However, this amount covers the reserves as noted above some of which are federally mandated, such as the GASB 45 for retiree liabilities and for leave liabilities at 600 and some thousand. One, and also one that has been contractually encumbered, which again is the replacement of the roof. That leaves about 400,000 that can be potentially used for new initiatives. All in all, the PDC has remained fiscally solvent and in total compliance with all material respects with federally mandated audit and accounting rules and procedures. I or Ms. Roberts will be happy to answer any questions you may have. All I need from the commission is approval to distribute the financial statements on our website. And that will be addressed under 10 F. F. Okay. Yes. Uh, any questions to Ms. Collins? Collins, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see, item seven here. I don't necessarily want to rush through this, but uh, so it's very important. You know, we've had uh, several employees that have been working for us to reach some milestones, and I would like to have them stand up there in here. Uh, Richard Case, he's back over here in the corner, and he's in charge of our building. <coughs> he's been with us for 10 years now. Uh, Joseph Turner. Oh, there he is, right, I'm sorry. And uh, he's been working on our communications, which he is uh, doing now with a newsletter and things like that. And over here to my left is Michael Long. And Mike has been with us now for 25 years, and he heads up all the field facilities and operations. So let's please give our one thing to Thank you much for your great service. We greatly appreciate that. Okay, we have uh, no submitted uh, public comments that I'm aware of. We'll now go into public comment period. Mr. Ellis James, Mr. Ellis, no, excuse me, Mr. James, where are you? Rush up there, will you? Hurry up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Kenlake Place in the city of Norfolk. There are all kinds of 
abuses that our citizens are subjected to. But I want to focus on something that is becoming almost epidemic right now. Because I move around all of Hampton Roads and much of Virginia, I am now aware of the fact that there are landlords, and not all of them are bad. There are agencies, both national and local, who are attempting to intimidate our residents on the question of voting. Although I understand that this commission is focused on many other issues across a broad spectrum, I would hope and urge each of the towns, counties, and cities to pay close attention to what's happening. <coughs> Let me give you a couple of examples. Right now, as we speak, in the city of Chesapeake, there is harassment of one of the political offices underway. I hope that Chesapeake will be able to take a close look at the situation and determine what, if anything, should be done. In my own city, in Norfolk, I have residents who have been told that they cannot exercise their free speech rights by both absentee landlords as well as others. Currently, there is an effort underway by the real estate industry to put out false information that we have in the sales tax fees money going to Obamacare. That is blatantly false but it is having an impact as I go door to door and talk to people. It is having an impact on people because they're not sure. These kinds of harassments are not what should be happening in the United States of America. And I would hope that at some point, each of the localities will be able to assess what might or might not be happening in their own communities and see if they can't get someone's attention to change the playing field so that all of our citizens, no matter who they support, are welcome to the voting booth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. James. Okay, I have no one else signed up for uh, public comments. Let's move to the approval of the consent agenda. I just uh, remind the commission that items 10F and 10H are being addressed here. We'll brief to you. And I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So move. From where? Louis? Okay, Louis. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay, move to item 11, nominating committee, Mr. Jack Tuttle. Uh, yes, Mayor Hallman cannot be here today, so he asked me to deliver the report of the nominating committee. You have a, a memo in your agenda which uh, sets forth the appointments. Essentially, this continues uh, Mr. Shepard as the chair and Mayor Wright as vice chair of PDC. So um, I will then uh, move the recommendation of the nominating committee. Start again. Okay. Uh, that second? Okay. Well, I'm looking over very you got that you went out on that one. Okay, all in favor of the motion made by the uh, budget or the uh, committee, <coughs> nominating committee, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, let's move to uh, item 11, uh, excuse me, 12. Um, and by the way, Jack, thank you for doing that. Uh, the three month schedule. Um, is listed on here in November. Uh, we see we have the, that's where we'll approve our legislative package. So again, folks, if we can get those in there, there's Chesapeake Bay TMDL report. This is a big one. I uh, uh, just wanted to point that out. I, was, I personally look forward to that one. And also, I just circled here the reg regional bacteria study. Again, uh, that's one I'm looking forward to hearing too. That's been a long going. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff on here. December, the meeting's been canceled. 
And in January, then, we go into uh, a lot of other things, and the retreat is going to be in February right now, tentatively, unless something changes, right? Correct. Okay. Um, so if you've got new things you want to add or whatever, please get them over to the staff so we can uh, work those. Uh, correspondence. It's in, listed in your package uh, for your information. Uh, I don't know if, uh, is there anything I need to really bring up? No. Uh, we've got about two minutes see if I can suck up that time. Uh, I just want to let you know that on project status reports, I can bring out things in here just to make sure you're aware of it. A lot of times I'm surprised by that. I did not know that the HRPDC in here, uh, we had the Hampton Runs Loan Partnership in which we worked with uh, qualified um, individuals and families to be able to fund, help them fund closing costs and down payments on homes. I just thought, was, I didn't know that. I just thought that was really interesting. And the fund is right about $75,000. Unfortunately, <coughs> down. And our staff here does a great job of working through those things. Um, Mr. Chair, could I recognize Shanita as uh, the, the person who, uh, who does this job? She's sitting over at the table. Here. Stand up so we can recognize you. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. Great. And uh, also, I didn't realize it's under the uh, pet shelter supply trailers that uh, we're getting trailers that, that's evacuation. for evacuation of pets. And it's a great, these trailers are not just, you know, go get a trailer and throw a dog and cat in the back. It's pretty complicated. They've got a lot of laws and rules and stuff. And that's, again, that's something our staff does. Anyway, I was surprised by that. And uh, I'm sorry if I. If you guys knew it, I didn't, but that's the way you learn, I guess. Okay, uh, so there's any old or new business? Well, the yeah. only supposed to do something on it. the audit be released. Oh, I'm sorry. It was in the consent. Yeah, that was number H, 10, or 10F. That's when I pointed out that we did look at Okay, uh, if there's no other further business. Yes, sir. Um, I, I had the opportunity to speak with one of our state governors the other day. He, I was talking about actions that weren't from out to this PDC, also served on the trailer PDC, and something we a letter we sent there. And, and his response was, well, we don't, we don't place a lot of importance on what comes from the PDC. And that was kind of shocking to me. I know he's a new delegate, and I don't bring his name up. But if others share, because he said we, I assume that maybe others mm -hmm. may share that same uh, opinion. And I'd like for us to, if, if, you know, with discussion or whatever, but reach out to our delegates, um, make them aware of who comprises the um, PDC um, and, you know, what our job is and how, you know, we're, because even it's, we're basically the all the mayors and chairs and, on uh, board of council members and other extremely interested citizens in the community that participate here. And I think we should, I think we do carry a lot of weight, and I think our delegates need to recognize that. So if we could you know, have some, if, after their session or whatever, I know things will be kind of busy between now and then, but just if we could come up with a way to reintroduce ourselves to old legislators and introduce ourselves to new ones. Yeah, and it's kind of it goes along with the, the legislative package. The you know what we can do is help our staff can help provide our legislators with information to understand what they're voting on. This is what VACO does, the VML, the city. There's a lot of organizations to do that. And yes, that's what we need to be doing. I mean, kind of invite them here. I mean, it would be my suggestion, you know, to just invite them to a meeting. They don't have to sit through the whole thing. They just come and be recognized. Well, you know, the number one thing they listen to is their voters. Yeah. That's We're what all, they did. We, I mean, we all vote. They vote. <laughs> I mean, that's okay, any other comments? Thank you, by the way, thank you very much. Okay, the meeting's adjourned.